Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new 20 liter transit brief from Evergoods, which is a really interesting new category for them. In general, I'm starting to see some more brief cases come back into the market. I don't know if they ever necessarily left, but you know, as a backpack enthusiast, I don't use briefs quite as much. But you know, as always, Evergoods, once they announced this and did the walkthrough of all the thought process that went into the designs, definitely piqued my curiosity with what they had built here. So I've been excited to have a chance to get hands-on with it over the past week. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to use it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, to me this definitely looks like a smaller version of the company's transit duffel, so if you've seen any of the videos for that, this is gonna feel pretty familiar as far as the style. It's got Evergoods' it's typical minimal utilitarian vibe that's gonna be really versatile across a number of environments, whether you're going into a more urban setting, if you're traveling, it's maybe not gonna be quite as sleek looking as some of the more tech-focused briefs on the market, but this is generally a style that I'm a big fan of. And then as far as the materials, the bag feels really solidly built. This exterior fabric is an 840D nylon, similar to what was on the recent edition of the CPL24. It's just held up really well. It also feels like it's gonna offer plenty of weather resistance. There's also a lot of kind of foam padding incorporated throughout the bag, which helps give it its structure, but also provide protection for everything that's on the inside. And then you, of course, have the really nice YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the exterior, the bag keeps things pretty minimal. On one side, you have the Evergoods logo with the Velcro backing to allow you to customize it with a variety of patches. And then at the top, you have the handles that will allow you to carry it like a briefcase, similar style here to what was on the Transit duffel. So a very strong feeling nylon material. These aren't the most padded handles. You can see that they're fairly thin. They don't have the aluminum stays, so it doesn't feel like they're digging into your hands in the way that I've mentioned with something like the CPL24. So, you know, I really like that these are softer. I've been able to hold this even when it's packed out pretty comfortably. It might have been nice to maybe have just a little bit more padding, but in general, these work quite well. They feel super sturdy. And then you have some attachment points along the edges of the handle so you can clip on additional accessories with a carabiner. And then on each end of the bag, you'll have the buckles that will help keep the main compartment secure keep the profile a little bit cleaner. And then this will also be when you release them, what you can attach the shoulder strap to. So very similar system here to what we saw with the Transit duffel. Similar strap here. It's got this sort of seatbelt like fabric that feels very durable. It's not as padded as I would like to see for a bag of this size. It feels like they might have been able to add a strap that felt closer to one of their backpack straps. You know, so maybe that's something for future iterations of these bags that would be cool, but you know, same sort of clip system here that locks in super securely. Haven't felt any concern about this coming loose. Really nice buckles here. And then I love how adjustable this strap is. You can adjust it on either end, so it doesn't matter, you know, how you orient it. And then Evergoods has included some strap management here to keep things looking neat. And I really like the length of the padded section of the strap as it just makes it very easy to use the bag however is gonna be most comfortable to you. So if you wanna wear it on your shoulder or if you wanna wear it cross body so you can swing the bag around, you're gonna have a lot of sort of flexibility with how you know long this is, which is great to see sometimes with these sort of straps. If the padded section is really small, it can take a little while to really tweak it to rest right on the padded section, which can be kind of annoying. So great to see the implementation here. And then if you don't wanna use it, the strap doesn't take up a ton of space. You can put it away, you can leave it at home, and then you can you know, tighten the buckles down to take the bag back to its kind of more clean aesthetic. And then taking a look at the capacity, as the name implies, the Transit Brief comes in at around 20 liters, which is an interesting choice for this form factor. It's not the first bag of this type that I've used in this size range. This reminded me a little bit of the Mystery Ranch three-way expandable briefcase and the Black Amber Forge. And those were great to use even in this size, but it still feels like maybe this could have been a little bit smaller, maybe the 16 liter range like their CPL 16. But at the 20 liter capacity, it can 
hold an impressive amount. And the silhouette of the bag is fairly fixed, so it doesn't really get too much smaller or bigger, depending on how you've loaded it out. The internal layout, as we'll see in a second, is adjustable in a way, but you know the bag is kind of gonna look the same. And I think it's a form factor that works pretty well, but it feels slightly big to me because of that rigidity and just the shape, especially when you're wearing it you know, cross body on your back, it can start to feel a little bulky, uh, but you know, that's definitely gonna be subjective depending on your size and what you're carrying and your just general preferences. It still felt fine as I've been carrying it as a brief when I'm wearing it on my shoulder. And you know, it just for some reason feels a little bit bigger than you might want for this form factor, but you know, you do get the additional capacity and flexibility that comes with that. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but in general, I think that it works pretty well. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has two zippered pockets on the outside. On this front one, where the logo is, you have some good internal organization in addition to just a nice amount of capacity. So you have some volume here and space on the front to maybe place some pouches, chargers, bulkier items that you're gonna be grabbing regularly throughout your day. And then you have some slip pockets on the back that you know are, remind me of the slip pockets on the Transit Duffel and Evergoods' daily bags. And so they have enough volume for something like my sunglasses case. Those were able to fit in there pretty comfortably. And then I also have my laptop charging block. And then you have a smaller slot for something like a pen or a flashlight and all the way on the edge you have another slightly larger slip pocket good for a mouse portable hard drive i have the cable that goes along with my laptop charging brick in this area you also have a little lanyard with a clip that's going to be a good spot for your keys or multi-tool or anything like that and then on the back of the bag you have another zippered pocket before taking a look at that i did want to mention that this backside doesn't have any sort of breathability which is something that Evergoods has been incorporating into not only their backpacks, but their sling bags. They have that really nice breathable material. It's well padded. And so that's not present here. If you're wearing this, you know, cross body on your back, you won't feel that same level of cushioning as you do with the other items. And that means that sweat might start to build up a little bit more quickly. So something to keep in mind i think that that makes sense i guess with the form factor of the bag that's how the transit duffel is as well uh, but still i thought worth mentioning and then the pocket here is simpler than the one on the front no internal organization but enough space for something like a notebook moleskin notebook will fit in here comfortably and you know good amount of height for something like a folder or some documents but the cool thing about this pocket is that it has a zipper on the bottom which you can open up and it will allow this to turn into a luggage pass-through so that you can rest this on a suitcase while traveling and i think the implementation is good here the space that's offered by this zipper seems to be enough to accommodate most common suitcase handles which is great to see and then you just have to remember to actually zip it back up if you want to use this as a pocket again and then as we move into the main compartment i did want to circle back around to the form factor one thing that this bag does very well is stand up on its own. As you can see here, that's due to the padding that's been incorporated around the bag and the rigid structure that it has. So you can place this down next to you, access the compartments on the side or the main area without the bag tipping over too easily. So that's really great to see. And, you know, I've just had a lot of thoughts around this form factor, you know, even though it is a brief, to me, this is what I imagine an everyday carry duffel could actually feel like also reminds me a little bit of maybe like a toolbox so it's just you know very interesting how it feels to use this and place it down next to you and you know i think that that is a great feeling because it just is super functional very simple compared to maybe a backpack where you're having to open up the clamshell reach in find whatever you need so you know that's where i start to see some of the benefits of something like this even though i still tend to prefer backpacks uh, you know, I can see a lot of value in sort of that toolbox or that duffel style layout. And so you have the two zipper pulls here to allow you to open this up. And then you can open it without releasing the buckles. It's not going to be able to open quite as wide, but you know, you can still get in to some of the items if you just need to grab something quickly. But if you really want to take full advantage of this space, you want to release the buckles, make sure that the zipper is all the way open. And then like the duffel bag, they have the aluminum stays here, which will really help keep the bag widely open so that as you're placing this down next to you, you can see into the bag, you can easily grab whatever you need. 
And so this is one of the more unique aspects of it, which I think works well. And you know, 20 liters of space, I was able to fit my everyday carry loadout pretty comfortably in here. I mean, you know, with briefcases, it never quite feels like you have as much usable volume as a backpack, but this one really surprised me with how much it was able to hold. And so the layout here is interesting because it does have this floating divider that Evergoods has been talking a lot about in their videos. So I'll give a closer look at that once we empty out this section. For me, the way that I've treated it is I've kind of moved the laptop to one side to create a large open space on the other, which works well with my typical pouch setup. So it's gonna be able to handle some of these bulkier items that I tend to have with me, like my Beat Studio wireless headphones. And then I also have a pouch from Lockby, which I've you know been using a lot lately, some EDC and tech items there. And then looking down into the bottom of the bag, I have an alpaca admin pouch, as well as the Evergood Civic Access pouch, two liters. And you can see that even with my laptop in this other section there, there's still a little bit of space on the front. So impressive amount of capacity in this section. And then beyond that, you have the two pockets on the side, which can expand out to accommodate something like a water bottle. Mine fits in there easily. This is a 20 ounce water bottle, but can see there's definitely some leftover space there. My 26 ounce Yeti Rambler would be able to fit pretty easily. And I believe that Evergoods showed some other water bottle sizes that it can accommodate. On the other side, I have the Civic Access Pouch one liter, which also fit very, very easily in there. So I really like the style of these pockets because they offer enough volume and will prevent something from tipping over, but then they also just collapse back into the edges of the bag if you don't wanna use them. On this side too, you also have a zippered pocket that's gonna be a little smaller, but it'll be great for preventing those, you know, items that you wanna reach easily that, and you don't want falling into the bottom of the bag. So at the moment I have my AirPods in here and I also have the little nail clipper set that I tend to have with me. And as you can see, I'm just kind of reaching in, grabbing things. The bag is managing to stay upright. It's not closing on me. And now with this main section a little bit emptier, you can start to get a better view of the adjustable divider here that houses the laptop sleeve. And so the idea is that this can, you know, kind of be out to create this secondary section here. This one is actually able to hold my Levitate portable standing desk. So you can get a sense of the sort of length of the bag here. I was surprised that it fit in there. So that's great to see. But then if you actually don't want to use that space, you can kind of push this up to the side and create even more space in the main area or if you wanna get some additional capacity. So the bottom of this is not fixed to the floor of the bag and that's what makes it adjustable. So, you know, you can't pull it all the way over, but I think that this is a pretty cool idea because, you know, this is meant to accommodate a variety of different loadouts and gear. And so depending on your use cases, it could be nice to just have the ability to move this around a little bit. And then the sleeve in the middle is meant to hold your laptop. Currently what I have here is a 14 inch MacBook Pro, but you can see there's a little bit of leftover capacity. So I believe this should fit the 16 inch MacBook pretty well. I think that's what they showed in the walkthrough video. And then you have a Velcro strap to help secure your device. This I thought was pretty interesting. It's such a long strap which I know is meant to accommodate a larger device, maybe something taller or bulkier, but I didn't like the implementation here quite as much as the way that they do their laptops. Because of the size of my laptop, I have to place this pretty low, otherwise I have like a lot of leftover strap here, so it doesn't really do the job of securing the device. So I really have to put it all the way down, but when the main compartment is full, that's not always as easy to do. So a little nitpick there, but you know you can release that and then like their backpacks, it does have the Velcro strap at the bottom so you can secure it and just kind of leave that out of the way, which I kind of prefer for this form factor. Since I'm just placing this down, it's not like the CPL bags where I'm worried that the laptop could potentially slide out. I'm just placing this down. I'm wearing it and holding it like this. So, you know, I think that that works just fine. You have a sleeve on the front. So it's pretty much a slip pocket. It doesn't have a ton of padding here, but a good spot for your tablet or a notebook or maybe a pouch. And then the laptop sleeve itself offers a nice amount of padding. It is padded on all sides, but it's not quite suspended off the bottom of the ground. So, you know, it feels like when you're dropping your laptop in, there's padding, but 
it's not like their backpacks where it's actually pulled up off the side. So, you know, that's something that I think is pretty common with many of the briefs that I've used and it still feels like there's something on the bottom preventing your laptop from getting damaged. You also have the bottom of the bag itself offers a nice amount of padding. So, you know, I think that in general, they do a good job there. No fleece lining or anything else on the inside. You can get your laptop in and out very, very easily, which is really nice. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the main compartment. Pretty interesting layout. Again, as I was using this, it really struck me how convenient this type of bag can be to use for a lot of my day-to-day -day needs. When I'm going to the coffee shop or the office, just walking in, putting this down next to me, opening it up, and I can just reach in, grab whatever I need. This is why people like backpacks that stand up so well on their own. So definitely the case here. I think that the opening works very nicely and it's a layout that it's gonna be interesting to see how people respond to it and the different sort of items that people might try to carry with it. I don't think that I would use this as a minimal travel bag, but it would be able to handle my packing cube along with a dop kit, an extra pair of shoes, so the typical loadout that I would use for a weekend trip, this would be able to you know, accommodate that very easily as well. And overall, I thought it's very functional. It can easily hold the stuff that I would tend to wanna to take although I still just prefer the aesthetic and feel of a backpack. If I was going for convenience, this definitely gets the job done. It offers the right amount of organization and space in my opinion. And you know, if you like Evergoods' style and you're looking for a super kind of versatile briefcase, this is gonna be an interesting option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a really interesting but great experience testing out the Evergoods Transit Brief 20 liter over the past week. You can currently purchase this on the company site for around $230, so definitely premium pricing on this one. It is an investment. Evergoods bags in general come in at a pretty premium price point, but you get a lot of value for that price. You know, there's some really interesting features and great engineering that went into this, really solidly built, but there's gonna be some other great bags in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bags this made me think of were of course some of the great backpacks in Evergoods' current lineup. The CPL24 has been one of my favorite EDC bags of the past couple of years. Even though I talk about the CTB26 a lot on the channel, the CPL24 is still probably closer to what I would say is my daily driver. It's also been released in a 16 liter size if you're looking for something a little bit more minimal. And the CPL has stood the test of time for a reason. The layout on that is just absolutely fantastic, really easy to get to all your stuff, great laptop protection, really comfortable harness system, solid build quality, and the crossover aesthetic of that bag just makes it great whether you're you know, exploring a city, traveling, or taking it into the outdoors. So if you prefer more of a backpack style carry over a brief, then the CPL24 or the 16 or the 28 are gonna be fantastic options to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Air Tech Brief, which like this one is a pretty modernized take on a briefcase. It's got a really nice shoulder strap handle, so you have a couple of different ways that you can carry it. It's got you know Air's typical sleek, techy vibe translated into this sort of a form factor. It stands up pretty well on its own. Great organizational layout, solid laptop protection, really weather resistant material. So all the things that you would expect from Air's products in that brief form factor so you can wear it on your shoulder, you can wear it like a sling bag, much like this one here. And so if you really liked the style of this bag as far as the form factor and the functionality, but you want something that's a little bit sleeker, that's gonna maybe work well in a professional setting, that's gonna be a fantastic option to keep in mind. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Black Ember Forge, which is one of the best three-way carry bags that I've had a chance to test out. So you can use that one like a backpack, a briefcase, or a shoulder bag. It has Black Ember's really weather resistant materials, great organizational layout and laptop protection. One of the interesting things about the Forge line is that they do offer an expandable option. So if you wanna use it as you know, a travel bag and an EDC bag, you do have the flexibility to do so. I believe that Black Ember is also releasing a smaller version of the Forge bag that's meant to be more of a shoulder style bag, kind of like this one, but regardless of which one you go with, you're still gonna get a really solidly built bag with great organization for your tech, very modern, sleek style. And if you're looking for something that's still gonna offer this sort of a form factor, but that you can wear as a backpack, then that's gonna be a great option to consider. 
With that being said, the Transit Brief holds up really well against all those options and provides a really functional and unique layout that I think is a great addition to Evergoods' lineup of bags. It might not be my immediate go-to just because I will still always prefer a backpack style carry for most situations, but if there's a situation where this form factor would make more sense, I could see this becoming a bag that I would really enjoy using and get a lot of value of. And so if you're a fan of a shoulder style brief carry, you want something with Evergoods' it's typical minimal style and really interesting layouts, and this is gonna be an excellent option to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Transit Brief and how it compares to some of the other similar work and everyday bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.